Eric Stefanik, I'm with uh, yet another SSL. Um, we uh, uh, we oftentimes hear things like uh, Yaw SSL or Yazzle. Uh, we answer to any of the above. And now it's not working. Other one. Oh, you have to point it at the black thing. Okay, I will now point it at the black thing. So uh, the, the quick story of the talk is that I'll talk a little bit about basic information for SSL with some assumption that you've heard about SSL before um, and then go into specifics on uh, what's different about our implementation. Uh, you may know the, the most widely used implementation of SSL is uh, OpenSSL. And we'll talk uh, mainly about what's different between uh, that one and ours, um, primarily because that's the one people understand. If there is time, we'll talk about uh, the Yazzle embedded web server, which we've implemented um, primarily because our, our embedded users uh, uh, need it. It's basically the HTTP protocol uh, implemented for embedded systems. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the funner projects that we're doing with, uh, with C Yazzle. Um, the basics about our, our, our project, I'll tell you the project genesis was originally to go into MySQL. That was the first and, and the biggest user of uh, the Yazzle technology to secure between clients and servers um, for, for MySQL. But we also targeted the technology at the embedded in real-time operating systems environments or operating system-less environments in the case you need to run uh, SSL and secure your data coming from a, a very low-powered sensor-type device um, up to the cloud, for example. Uh, our focus is on size and speed. We try and be minimalists. Uh, we support the minimal uh, uh, of the spec that is widely used, which means we apply Occam's razor um, liberally to the implementation of SSL to keep it small and keep it also very portable. Um, but we are very good at supporting the industry standards and I'll talk, I think I have a slide later on about that. Uh, licensing wise we're GPL uh, as well as commercially licensed. Uh, we are what we call dual licensed uh, which means uh, we, we as a company and a project own the copyright and uh, for, those cus for those users that can't tolerate the terms of the GPL we sell commercial licenses and that's how we fund uh, the project development. Um, we also support uh, or include uh, FLOSS exceptions, uh, which is Free Software Foundation approved for uh, implementing uh, GPL-based libraries inside of, say, MIT or Berkeley-based, Berkeley-licensed uh, projects without having the GPL kind of take over. Um, We've been around since 2004 is when we start, did the original implementation, uh, single source base since then, uh, same development team working on it since that time. Uh, and probably the big point on this slide that, that we like to, to point out is that we're just a whole lot smaller, where's my pointer, than OpenSSL, so about 20 times smaller, and the sizes are on the next slide. Um, Starting with the, the standards, we're supporting up to TLS 1.2. There's only a couple other projects that are, are supporting that level of the TLS uh, standard. Um, we also support DTLS, Datagram TLS. Uh, both of those standards are useful in some of the newer uses of the internet, which specifically means streaming media. A lot of the old SSL implementations were really good at uh, dealing with static web pages going across the internet encrypting those and securing those. Uh, we like to think our implementation of SSL is really good, if not the best, uh, implementation for uh, dealing with streaming media, so that means video or voice. And a lot of our users think so too, so we're ending up in things like uh, voice over IP phones, IP telephony, that sort of thing. Um, and sometimes gaming as well. Um, you can see the sizes there. We're pretty small. We're about as small as it can get. Um, some guys on the OpenWRT project got it smaller. I think they got it down for their purposes to about 15K in size. Um, we do keep our API simple, again, applying Occam's razor, um, and we think that's a strength of the product. We make this form of security easy to use, at least from the programmatic level, uh, by making it as simple as possible. 
Um, we also we also those support uh, the OpenSSL um, API in in a limited subset. I think there's 4,000 or so uh, functions available in OpenSSL, so it's fairly complex. We support 400 of those for projects, uh, essentially for projects that need to port over from OpenSSL uh, to uh, Yazl. Uh, we're, we're very big on hardware optimization, so we've done a lot of optimization uh, f uh, down to the assembly level for PIC32 chips, for example, a lot of the ARM chipsets. Uh, more recently, we did AES-NI, which is uh, for the new uh, Intel server uh, uh, chipsets. We're pretty excited about some of the new Cypher suites uh, that we're supporting. All the ones in gray are kind of the standard stuff, but the, the new interesting ones to us are Rabbit and HC128. I talked about streaming media a minute ago. These are some of the new Cyphers for streaming media, and they're super fast uh, when you, you're dealing with um, streaming media. To date, I believe we're the only SSL implementation that has implemented these types of streaming Cyphers, uh, and the results are pretty dramatic. Um, as much as, you know, depending on the system course, as much as uh, 50, 70 percent improvement, sometimes even a multiple um, if you're on an underpowered CPU. So they can be pretty meaningful if you're trying to stream video in a secure way. Uh, we also have uh, we have the ability, and of course anybody with some code has the ability to add their own ciphers, but we've modularized to the point where adding your own cipher um, to, to Yazl uh, can be fairly easy, and uh, we've tried to make it as pluggable as possible. Um, so there are some uh, proprietary uh, cipher suites available as well uh, in CASL, and uh, if you follow our project, you'll see announcements uh, about that sort of thing in the, in the coming months. Um, another thing that we talk about is the ability to work without an operating system. We do have a lot of people using us in sensor-based um, type environments, which means, say, you're, you're deploying uh, X millions of chips to sense the amount of electricity going out of or, or into X million households. So you really want to minimize the cost of that device that you put into a household. Hence, uh, the, the following on requirement of not having the overhead of an operating system and not having the overhead of an expensive SSL. And, and cryptography can get pretty expensive, but we've uh, we've made our product uh, uh, and project easy to easy to run without um, an operating system to the point of actually not even needing the standard C library to to build it. So, I already mentioned uh, TLS 1.2 support. Some of the uh, the other projects that are doing that. One of the limitations of of, of supporting the newest and greatest in in the TLS standard is uh, uh, the ability to test against others. Uh, right now, I think the only ones we can test against are the GNU TLS guys, which also have an excellent project, and then the Opera browser. But that's it right now in terms of TLS 1.2 support. Uh, for whatever reason, I can report to you that the industry is starting to pick up this level of the protocol, and there seems to be a lot of demand in the last couple of uh, quarters, the last six months or so. There's been a lot more demand for TLS 1.2 support, especially in uh, telephony-type environments, high-end telephony environments. Um, so one of the one of the funnest projects we did uh, last summer was uh, with Memcache. Uh, if you're in the web space, you probably know what Memcache is. It's a distributed memory manager. Um, we we were wondering uh, uh, what about securing this distributed memory manager and and what uh, what could we uh, what, what kind of performance would we get uh, specifically when you go secure something like this that's sort of driven to be a performance beast. Um, so if you look on the far left, yes, it's your left. Um, this is memcache running uh, without any encryption. This is um, the uh, benchmark running directly against a MySQL database. Uh, the interesting things to note here is that roughly, and this is run on like uh, maybe a three-year-old Mac, uh, this particular benchmark, so it's kind of relative. Um, if you're running on a brand new uh, high-performance uh, server, then these kind of get squished together relatively, um, especially if you're running our AES-NI um, uh, hardware encryption. But uh, what, what, what we thought was interesting is how well the um, 
the stream ciphers uh, uh, performed relative to some of the older and more standard ciphers. So you can see they work pretty good. Uh, another project in, uh, that we're really interested in because we've had a lot of users doing it um, for themselves and rolling their own with CASL as the key component is building out systems for secure firmware updates. And to do that, you're going to need something like, well, you're going to need an SSL essentially on the device to, roll out, uh, to be able to roll out your firmware updates to the device. Um, and uh, we, we've also seen a, a certain number of attacks based on, on people taking over the device or getting their own firmware on the device um, or, or the, getting the malicious firmware built on, or set up on the device. So secure firmware updates is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. Um, part of the reason we're here at FOSDEM is we're, we want to talk up this issue. We want, we're actually seeking collaborators, people who are interested in this problem. Essentially what we'd like to build out as a project and we have kind of the base formed for it is uh, um, uh, an open source secure firmware update system. Uh, and that means something on the server side that keeps track of who's updated and who's not. And it keeps, and it, it also means using something like CASL on the uh, device side, but building kind of an agent around it for doing the updating. Um, and like I said, we've had plenty of our users doing this, but we have yet to roll it out as uh, an actual project. But it is forthcoming from us, and we are seeking collaborators on this. Uh, more recently, just talking about new features, we've um, added uh, so, uh, certificate generation to uh, CASL so you can make your own keys, you can be your own certificate authority um, if you want to start uh, your own certificate business and go compete with VeriSign and use CASL to do it, you can. Uh, but more, more likely, you're, um, uh, you're, you're not requiring the authority of, uh, or you're not requiring an external authority and um, uh, uh, are, are in a position to generate your own certificates and, and keys and, and use them. But that's, that's probably the newest kind of biggest thing we've done to the technology. Um, one thing we found out in the course of, uh, of, of managing our project is um, uh, every month or so somebody else wants us to integrate CASL into an embedded web server. Uh, we, we decided to sort of centralize those efforts. We've ported it in, into, say, Lighty. We've ported it into Nginx uh, and a couple others and some proprietary ones. Um, but we, we really like the Mongoose embedded web server, so we centralized our efforts around that, and that's what we recommend. And we've actually... Um, built out additional features and contribute to that project as well. If you're uh, uh, in the market for an embedded web server and you want it to be open source, we c uh, can't think of a better one to work with. Uh, these guys are doing a really good job and it's one of our key collaborators for, for the YASL project. Um, so you can see basically what the, I'm running out of time, but here's the standard features you get with the YASL embedded web server, uh, uh, which is again uh, derived from the Mongoose project. But it's all the basic stuff, again, applying Occam's razor for when you need an embedded web server on a device. Uh, a list of uh, the environments that we support. Um, by a show of hands, are there any Tron users out there? Okay, I thought so. It's fairly esoteric and used primarily in Japan for, there's probably Tron users out there, but they're on some device that's sitting in their, in their uh, living room somewhere. Uh, another project we're seeking collaborators on is CASL running on a GPU. Uh, we think it, cryptography is an interesting way to leverage the, and harness the power of, of GPUs. We've done some initial porting. Uh, OpenCL is also kind of young, so we've run into a fair number of bugs um, porting uh, our cryptography over to, to uh, uh, OpenCL on the GPU. But that's, that's uh, in, uh, in progress, and we do expect that we'll release something and we're, we're seeking people that want to join us in, in that effort. And the black thing. How's an embedded SSL used? Here's some examples. We've ported this thing into printers. I talked about sensors earlier, telepharmacy more recently. So uh, the doctor walking around giving you a prescription and that going somewhere. That sort of thing needs to be secured with SSL. IP telephony, we've been out for a number of years. More recently, people, um, both commercial, um, primarily commercial video game manufacturers are starting to uh, 
to integrate this stuff. And with that, I'm finished. Thank you for your attention.